for this. Yeah. They should postpone it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a no brainer to me. And we've known that the storm is going to move in. We've known it was going to move in on Thursday since basically Sunday. So the mm -hmm. timing has right. not changed. The path has changed very little. I know it's a financial hit for them to postpone it by a day, but I mean, compared to the alternative. Size safety is first. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at what's yeah. happening out there. And the reason we're concerned about it, we'll zoom off to the southwest and take a look at Hurricane Michael. Swirling away is a major category four storm in the Gulf of Mexico. A very well defined eye at the center surrounding by intense thunderstorm activity. All these purple shaded clouds, those are the ones with the very high tops reaching way up into the atmosphere. Those are the powerful storms that make up the eye wall of the storm. That's where the strongest winds are. Already those outer rain bands and some gusty winds making their way onto the coast. You saw that from our live shot near Panama City. Storm moving to the north right now, but it's going to take a curve to the northeast and head directly towards Panama City. That's where it's expected to make landfall by early this afternoon with 145 mile an hour sustained winds at that point of of landfall. Significant storm surge to the right of the path heading up into that big bend area of Florida. The shape of the coastline just helping to make the things even worse there in terms of that storm surge threat and a lot of wind damage along the Florida coast as well. The storm will weaken to tropical storm strength by the time it's approaching us tomorrow, but already that rain will be moving in by late tomorrow morning and then it races through. It's going to be way off the coast, but as that storm moves through central North Carolina, it's going to be the threat of damaging tropical storm force winds, very heavy rainfall and isolated Tornadoes. So let's talk about all of those threats in turn, beginning with the winds. That strongest wind field right around the center of the storm. That's the red shaded area. That's where the hurricane force winds are. That moves on shore and just disappears because the storm will weaken and it'll be down to tropical storm force as it's moving into our neck of the woods tomorrow. But already those tropical storm force gusts over 40 miles an hour moving into the sand hills by early tomorrow afternoon. As it progresses through, most of central North Carolina has the potential to get those tropical storm force gusts, including the triangle all the way up to the Virginia state line. But then those gusty winds are out of here by the time the sun comes up on Friday morning. For the moment, it's counties to the south and east that are included in the tropical storm watch where those gusty winds are most likely. But just based on the way that wind field looks and the map I just showed would not be surprised if that is expanded. It should be expanded farther to the north by a county or two just to highlight the potential impact in terms of power outages, some down trees or maybe even tree branches that could block some roads as well. The flooding threat is going to be the main concern. We're talking about four to five inches of total rainfall in most locations across central North Carolina, more than that in spots, and that is enough to cause flash flooding with that rain falling on increasingly saturated ground. All of central North Carolina under a flash flood watch until early Friday morning. The tornado threat is going to be greatest along and to the right of the center of circulation, which highlights the impact for the sand hills in the southern coastal plain, but that forecast path has drifted just a little farther north with the latest up Date. That trend continues. The slight risk area with the greatest isolated tornado threat might get expanded a little closer to the triangle as well. We'll monitor all those threats as the storm approaches and as it moves through throughout the day tomorrow, but at least it's a one day thing. It'll be out of here by the time the sun comes up Friday morning. Sun's just coming up this morning. A lot of clouds out there. It's a warm, muggy day. Beautiful perspective with the sun ducking underneath the clouds from Carter Finley Stadium. Near 70 degrees for temperatures across central North Carolina at the moment. Exactly 70 in the triangle officially, 72 degrees in Fayetteville. Talking about a lot of serious stuff in the weather, but let's take a moment, relax, look at some dogs. Our dogs of the day, Haru and Sashi. I hope I'm saying those names correctly. Thank you to Arnold and Tony, their dog dads, for sharing that picture with us. They don't look too impressed with the forecast for today. We're going to see some scattered showers and thunderstorms already this afternoon, not directly associated with Michael, just kind of the influence of that storm that's still way off to our southwest. Keep the umbrella handy today. Keep the rain jacket handy tomorrow because it will be windy enough that the umbrella won't do you any good. Tomorrow's our alert day because of that wind threat, heavy rain threat, and the tornado threat that will continue until about midnight tomorrow night and the storm gets out of here and the weekend is looking great. Highs around 70, lows near 50. I know. That sounds perfect. It is going to be amazing. We have that one bad day, but then after that, I think everyone will be yeah. outside enjoying those cooler temperatures. We have something to look forward to. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we're talking to you when we're not both on camera. <laughs> All right. Well, looking at traffic now, this is I-5.